The lady you are seeing right now, this is Irene Mutare. This woman has been in the street for such a long time because this is a survival means. She doesn't have any way of survival, but unless she begs, that is when she survives. Now, this woman that you are seeing right now here in the picture, she lives here in Rusaka, particularly in Chiwaria compound. So I'm just going to take you through Chiwaria compound. But if you look at this bridge, these cars which are passing in particular, those who are familiar with Rusaka, you can tell this is at Manda Hill, a place where Eileen is normally found begging on each and every day. Those who are familiar with this route, I'm pretty sure the woman that is in the picture right now who is seeking for help, who is begging and asking people for some coins and some monies, this woman I'm pretty sure you are familiar with her face. Perhaps some of you might even have already lended a hand. To help her out now i'm going to take you throughout where eileen stays so that you can understand how this lady was born in copper belt province of zambia now this when when she was born she was born like any other normal child but if you look at this lady right now she doesn't have one eye and she doesn't have a hand and the story that i'm about to tell you right now is a very touching story which has made her and put her in a very critical condition. When she was in Copper Belt, according to her, when we interviewed her, life became very, very hard for her, which made her and her husband to plumped to shift to Lusaka to look for a better life. And as they came here in Lusaka, fortunate enough, the husband managed to find a job. So as the husband was working, it so happened that one day the husband collapsed, fell down, and he was taken to the hospital. And as Eileen was in a shock, the time that they reached to the hospital, the doctors pronounced the husband as dead. Now this forced this woman, Eileen, to go in the street to start begging. According to her, it was not her wish to start begging from the streets, but she had no option because the husband left her with his six children, of which she needed to take care of. Apart from that, this woman that you are seeing, she's also renting. And when she came from the copper belt, she directly came to Lusaka in a compound called Chiboria in the midst of Lusaka. Now, in this area, Chiboria, where she is right now, this is the only place that she has presided in since the time that she left Kitwe of the Copper Belt province. And when she came to Chiboria, according to her, when the husband died, she decided to start begging for help so that she can raise some money for rentals and she can raise some money also for food and to take care of her children too. It was not easy for her because this man was a man who stood by her side despite the condition that she was in. According to this lady, Irene Mutari, she has explained to us that she came here in Lusaka in 2019. 2019. And during that period, the husband died. And when the husband died, she had no choice but to start begging from the street. We followed her story very well, and according to her, she told us that she has been begging for so long now. And she's been begging from the place called Manda Hill. Some people I know you're going to be familiar with this face. So this lady that some of you have helped her already, the money that she has been begging from the street, she has not been misusing the money. But according to her, we followed her to the house. She said she has been keeping this money 
taking this money to to pay for us to pay for the children school fees and she has been paying for lentils and buying food also and according to her she said during after the after the husband died who just collapsed from nowhere upon taken to the clinic to the hospital the husband was pronounced dead of which it came as a shock to her and because of that that resulted into her starting to beg from the street now we asked Irene what do you really want or we asked are you really happy from begging in the street. I would like you to see more about this woman that we're talking about today, Irene Mutari. This is her house. She has been sleeping here. She has been staying here. And the picture that you are seeing right now, this is the husband who got married to her. And this husband, when, she, when he was marrying Irene Mutari, he married her the way she is. He proposed to her the way she is. And for this reason, this woman has been thanking God according to what she has told us. Irene said she is very, very grateful to the husband because it's not easy for a man leaving all the beautiful ladies out there but to pick her and marry her. It's unfortunate that the husband died so early and left her in such a difficult situation. Now, if you'll see, this is the house where Irene Mutare is staying, and this is the house where they were staying with the husband whom you have just seen on the picture right there. I'm just right now going to take you through to the bedroom where they sleep. And according to her, she said to us, they sleep here, almost all of them. This is the bed, as you can see. There are no proper blankets here. There are no, it's, it's not a good place where you can say people are comfortable. But at the end of the day, this woman doesn't have, a, doesn't have any choice. But this is a place which she calls her home. When she goes for begging at Mandawi and some other streets in Lusaka, at the end of the day, in the evening, she's exposed expected by the children to come with something home so that she can feed her children and to less and to keep also some money so that she can pay lentils and some other stuff that she needs to take care of the family right now as we are talking Irene as you can see and as you can look at her according to her she say it's not easy because sometimes people would laugh at her Sometimes people would make fun of her because of the condition and because of the way she looks. And when we asked her to say, uh, but what made the husband to propose to such a woman? According to her, she said it took the grace of God. And that is the reason why she doesn't want to get married anymore. We asked Irene Mutari and Irene Mutari said there was some men some time back who came to propose marriage to her but she refused and the reason is very very simple to her she said because she wants to raise her children and marriage according to her she said if she gets married she is going to disturb the life of her children she's the kind of a woman who is willing right now to take her children to school so that they can better their lives and when we ask her what would you really want for you to better your life do you want to continue begging in the streets but she said i'm not happy begging in the street but the only thing that is making me to go in the street to beg it's because i'm trying to buy food to put food on the table for my children i'm trying to pay my school fees buy school uniforms books etc etc for my children and majorly i beg because that was according to our words i beg because the house that i'm living in right now is not my house but it is a house that i am renting so she said to us if there is anybody who can come in and help me to find some money that I can start up a better business to better my life, 
so that my children can be comfortable. I can take them to school. I'll be able to pay rentals. And surely she was right. Because I believe we can come in, merge, unite, and help out this lady. For she has been begging for more than 10, more than 5, more than 6, 10 years now. She's been in the street. And this is what she has to say. She said she is tired of all this. But the problem is she doesn't have anywhere to seek help, anywhere to find that help from. According to her, she said if she can find a job that can sustain her, help her to pay rentals, help her to buy food and take the children to school, then she can stop begging. So we are trying all, by all means to come up with a strategical plan that we merge and hold hands. We see how we can help our dear beloved Eileen Mutare so that our life indeed can be better. To all of you who are watching the, this video right now, I'm asking you, let's come together and help out this woman. This is Young Future TV. Please subscribe to Young Future TV for we are going to continue with this story. We shall bring you another story of Irene Mutare on how she has been surviving, on how she has been waking up, going for her work, for she calls this her job, her everyday job, begging for her is a job. So we would like you to subscribe to Young Future TV so that you follow this story intensively and carefully so that we can all lay our hands to help this woman. For once we help this woman, it's not only her who is going to be helped, but her children as well. Until we meet next time, as you subscribe to Young Future TV.